see how it goes. So you said that you've done a few podcasts already? Yeah. Which ones have you done already? Uh, I did Lucas's about three times. Uh, Samson and Christians. I've made a few cameos in there. Oh, okay. Uh, um, how is that one? That one looks fun. Yeah. Oh, Samson and Christian's fun. Watch, hanging out and watching it's a lot more fun for me. Okay, okay. Where I'm like, I don't want to have to be like the center of attention, but it's fun like messing with people on Omegle or like when Money G. I don't know oh, why dude, the fuck they haven't had Money G. He is fucking God. hilarious. He doesn't stop. Like, I have to... I don't know how, but I'll have to... Are we recording yet? Yeah. Oh, yeah. cool. Dude, Shit. yeah. Guys, what's up? Welcome. So, fucking episode... This is 14. This is Halima. Hi. We're just chatting, you know? Yep. Just fucking just going. Just Hi. Do I have to give people my ID? <laughs> no, yeah. I was going to say, I mean, your birth certificate's yep. fine. Your nationality. Yep. Yeah. Gotta make sure, because yeah, my, my diversity uh, numbers are looking a little low. Yeah, so. they are. <laughs> you, fucking, you fucking need it, dude. It was so funny. Uh, do you want me to identify as non-binary now? <laughs> yeah, oh, we dude, can do that right now. I'm non-binary and bisexual today, just because he needs the points. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. dude. Fuck my yeah. parents are immigrants, too. I was going to say, I looked on uh, the Spotify analytics, and we have 1% of non-binary listeners. Exactly. I'm, I'm the 1%. There it is. Yeah, <laughs> not financially. <laughs> Not financially. I just want to be like that kind of rich, just like property rich. Just property rich. Yeah, I always, I always like daydream about being like a white chick that has like a sugar daddy, but I'd like use all that money to like buy property, <laughs> in gentrify neighborhoods. <laughs> what would you, What would you do with that property? Money. Just overpriced property, dude. Just rent it out. Yeah, I would ruin neighborhoods. Just build like Starbucks's <laughs> and like Orange Theories and charge like three thousand for like a studio. That's fucking yeah, hilarious. I'd, I fucking flip Old Town East entirely. So you, we were just talking about uh, fucking Samson's and uh, fucking oh Christian's yeah, podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, it's pretty fun. So what is that one uh, all it's about? Called, it, it's called Ass Out. They just like talk to people on Omegle, which is pretty fun because it's like people from all over the world. Okay. And, like, crazy, like, teenage kids. Sometimes it's, like, there was one episode, they have, like, clips on Instagram, but it was Curtis, who's their, like, uh, friend. He's also a f really funny comic. But, um, they had these, like, Russian kids that were, like, Black Lives Matter, and then this guy, <laughs> like, he slapped his friend. They're, like, Russian kids in Russia, like, filming, like, from their phones, and, like, we're gonna, I'm gonna slap my friend to support Black Lives Matter movement. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, it's so entertaining because like kids will do ridiculous stuff and then it gets hilarious. Dude, I feel like kids are fucking nuts on there, yeah. dude. Like the amount of like like their. Clips, I used to have fun on there all the time. They're yeah. I was gonna say it's been a really long time since I've been on yeah. that fucking on that website, but I feel like trolling people is so that much one fun. and uh, fucking uh, the other one, chat roulette. That one was yeah. the other one, right? Well, yeah. That one turned yeah. into dicks really quick yeah. though. <laughs> that one turned into a lot of dicks really yeah. quick. I'm surprised that they don't run into. Do they run into that a lot? Dicks and shit? Um, yeah. I think they were banned from TikTok. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing about it. It's, it's just like you can't really go too far or go too racy. Yeah. See, I, uh, one of my videos for the first time actually just got fucking uh, kicked off of TikTok. I, uh, it was the one with Blake and I, yeah. and he was talking about Crave Case of Pussy. Yeah. And so it was like, d we said dick, we said fucking pussy, yeah. we said, uh, he asked me if I was gay, so it was just like all of the fucking things that we weren't allowed to do, we just did in that one video. And they didn't even take it down either, they just fucking silenced it. And I was just like, well, that's dumb. Yeah. I don't know if I, I think I took it down already, because I was yeah. like, that's, I'm not That's frustrating. Have. It is. Yeah. It's a, it's a good thing about Patreon, is that like, you could do as you please. Yeah. But it's Until, hard to. unless you're Alex Jones. And yeah. Then, and yeah, then yeah. they're like, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Alex Jones is like a crazy, he's a scenario where he's an outlier. I feel like he's crazy. I like he him is. as, like, like I yeah. search out his new content. Yeah. Because it's like, this guy, like, even if he is serious and he's just mentally ill, it's so fucking entertaining. Yeah, it it's is. like watching all of those fucking Karen videos yeah. where they're just like, Ah, like you yeah. can't be here or whatever I've, I've been watching lots of them where there's like one girl was like mad yeah. because some guy didn't uh 
grab extra trash she had she's like in a rural area. i don't know how yeah. it works over there i know that like where i were, lived like we had to buy like tags so you get two trash bags for free then everything else you had a tag and if you didn't have a tag on it they wouldn't pick it up so but she was like really mad she just like was like yelling at him screaming and then she was like rolling on the floor ninja rolled on the ground she's <laughs> screaming almost kind of like that guy yeah. uh, at the shrunken head where he's like oh yeah. hi oh i don't understand like that aspect of like white trash culture yeah where I it's just understand. causing scenes <laughs> like what is wrong with, with these people i yeah. see young white women do that middle-aged white women <laughs> middle-aged white men you don't see a grown old man a yeah. grown old man will never do that yeah, shit he'll fucking just fucking... but a drunk white chick will do that on a friday night <laughs> that is so crazy because like i mean i will say that i mean i've thrown fits at like work yeah or something but i've never been in the middle of like a fucking target yeah. or something and just been like ah, yeah. ah, like that that's like child shit i know it's like what do, when do you find the time to do this you're going to target i'm i'm always just in a rush when i go to target <laughs> exactly. I, need to get, I need to get these yoga pants and run well, I feel like a lot of these people can't fucking run at all. Yeah. So I feel like that's the problem. <laughs> They're just like watching. I used to work like delivery for North Star uh, back in like uh, 2020, and I would drive through Upper Arlington, and this was like prime quarantine when everyone was like running, okay. and like the runners' forms they were so fucking bad. It was just, <laughs> like people that were just way too intense in like an 85 degree day where it's like dude you're not supposed to go max speed yeah constantly uh you work out a lot don't you uh yeah but not like running anymore okay really quick i just gotta check yeah. something Whoop. all right whatever well we i think it's working i think it's working but nice. uh you do a lot of exercising and stuff yes uh, what kind of exercising shit do you do? Um, I skip rope now. I go to the gym. I haven't been to a gym in three days, and I think I'm going insane. But Damn. Yeah. I feel like I, my best uh, mental state was when I was going to the gym yeah. for like it was like right before the pandemic and i was like yeah. about i was like making like life changes because it was like yeah. and it wasn't necessarily like new year shit right before the pandemic hit but it was just like i was working out for like three months i was like getting real like into it four times a week two hours at a time you know what i mean an hour and a half two hours at a time and then uh i was about to start like boxing and fucking you know jujitsu and all the bullshit but then like you know pandemic hit and all that shit yeah. just kind of stopped and i was the ymca and it was the one in hilltop so yeah. it got used for homeless people <laughs> and then after the pandemic cleared out it was still used for homeless people yeah. so it just sucked no oh, it's fine yeah dude where do you work out at uh my apartment gym but they're renovating till march so planet fitness oh, and i yeah. hate it i hate it planet gets so fitness. sweaty in there i don't it's too claustrophobic I could go to, like, the abs and stretching section since no one's there yeah. to go stretch, but, like... <laughs> no one ever stretches anymore. I, it's, like, the to. craziest thing. How? I don't know. They literally will go into the gym and then leave. Dude, and... I feel like an old person if I don't stretch. Like, on yeah. Mondays, I go straight from, like, I wake up, like, walk for, like, an hour, go straight to, like, the gym and work for, like, six hours. It, like, by the time it's, like, eight or nine, I'm so stiff. Yeah. And every Monday I just spend like five minutes like stretching right next to like the pool table. God damn it. I but did it, forget something. But it like it fr I don't understand how people don't stretch constantly. We always fucking forget that fucking shit. Yeah, I uh I always uh I always feel like uh when I was younger, I used to stretch all the fucking time. Yeah. Like I literally was stretching every day putting my legs on fucking super high shit just like stretching and everything and i feel like i still have pretty good uh you know flexibility but i definitely need to stretch more often definitely because yeah. like nice. literally before it was like all the time like yeah. i would just be just like chilling and just stretch just yeah. stretching yeah. and then now i'm just like you know not doing that <laughs> no it happens i i just started working out like uh, about three almost four years ago so like i went from like being like uh about like 250 when i was 19 to like uh i'm in like the late 170s now 
Dang. I'm fucking pissed off about it. Yo, that's um, like... I, congr- I was like in great shape in like December 20th. I was in... And then I don't know what the fuck happened. <laughs> but I just like had four days where I went off and I was like, okay, this is not going well. I remember when I first met you and like, I mean, you were definitely, I you know, larger. Yeah. But like... Uh, but I also feel like it's just because you're shorter too. So yeah, it's like yeah. you just it looked look like it. round. Yeah. You just looked round. Yeah. Now you don't even look like that. Like uh, it's like crazy. I especially I love going back to watch your uh, Kill Tony. I tried that you to did. watch it yesterday. You tried to watch I it yesterday. Couldn't. It what? Was, Why not? Worse. I, can't I thought watch it was myself. so good. I think it was awful. It Why was, did you think uh, it was what was what was the what, what did you think it was bad about it? The interview afterwards or the the set itself. The set, like it felt like I couldn't. It, it wasn't like properly presented in okay. the way. Like I was shaking. Like I was terrified yeah. the entire time, and my voice was shaky. Which that. Yeah, I could tell. Yeah, yeah. That I was put gonna say. Off. It's so crazy to me though, and this is, and I always talk about this all the time, and I know that you've, uh, I've talked about this with other people, and you've seen it, but like it just blows my mind that you get so nervous around you know these big names yeah. and stuff like that, and it's like you. You're just as good of a killer as any of the other guys. Uh, you know what I mean? Not at all. Why not? Not at all. I'm not I'm not anywhere near that. Like I look at those people and they're like they're sitting on Mount Olympus. Like I used to be into like um like Rick Riordan, like yeah, yeah. Greek mythology books and they it's kinda like, oh, they're like Zeus and Poseidon and you know all those other folks. But you're like the female Hercules. Nah. Who I guess who yeah, well, I, I, I'm I'm a toddler in this. Like I'm literally gonna be a three year old kid that's about to start stop. But you're a diapers. hilarious as fuck, three year old kid. I mean, but I'm like, I, like almost I three years I'm in. Doing. I'm almost like you know what I mean. I'm almost three years in, and I'm not. I wouldn't say I would say that I'm like not nearly as close as you are to yeah. like your the like the joke formula. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I feel like you have the joke formula. I would say that I'm not as nervous around like you know famous people but like yeah. at the same time i'm not as funny so it's like you know what i mean it's like a trade-off because yeah. like i feel like you're hilarious it's and also true. your fucking uh your hitler joke that you did yeah on that fucking oh yeah. dude that like what did you say uh, hitler and i have a lot in common we're both yeah. aquariuses yes. <laughs> that was like <laughs> that's so good oh thanks dude that's good thanks fuck uh so you said you've been I, doing comedy what two three years uh yeah it'll be three years in april okay yeah. hell yeah and uh what ultimately got you started because like there's a lot of stuff that i kind of want to talk to you about because you used to be fucking used to be muslim or you know practicing yeah. muslim or whatever yeah. and like yeah. you are now do comedy you used to do comedy in a fucking burqa like <laughs> not or, a burqa or not i was fucking <laughs> lying i was just joking uh yeah, it, would, it would be so much cooler if i did it yeah in a burqa. <laughs> just like all you know i might stop by my aunt owns like a like a head like a muslim like dress store oh really so i could just like pick up something one day dude it's literally I, right on morse like so away. you were wearing the whole get up though the whole yeah, yeah, the yeah. hide in the hair and everything. yeah yeah Dang! Did you like do the whole thing? Like no, no cover it was the just face? like the scarf, like around my just around the head. Face. Okay, yeah. okay, hell yeah. So how did this start? And did the religion have anything to do with like starting comedy? Like, what was this all um, about? How did it all start? Like, I've never really believed in the religion. Okay, I should be honest. Like, ever since I was a kid, like I just didn't like. I hated the ritual of having to wake up at the broken. crack of dawn. <laughs> Who cares? Dude? Yeah, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> God doesn't exist, dude. This is all BS. Yeah. But, like, um, I... Ever since I was a kid, I just did... I had to, like, wake up at the crack of dawn and, like, go to the mosque and, like, Ramadan and all these, like, rituals that I had to do constantly because it's like, oh, you don't want to go to hell. You don't want to go to hell. Avoid going to hell. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't laugh too loud. Don't be too loud. Be a... Like, it was a whole lot of stuff where I was like, I'd, I've read the book and I don't buy this. Mm-hmm. So, but I had to, like, conform. Because that's people in, especially in my family, they they attach their own personal identity to the religion. Okay. It's like synonymous with who they are. So really quick, I know this might yeah. be a dumb question. You are second generation? First, like, what are you technically? Uh, since I was like born here, I'm technically first generation. Okay. So your parents came here. Yeah. Holy shit. From Somalia. Yeah. Dude, I will say that like one of the coolest things like from moving from a small town to like the city 
is that I have run into so many like first and second generation people. Yeah. And it's they're the most interesting people. Yeah. By far. Oh, it's so cool. They're so fucking awesome because it's like they unlike a lot of people in America and I feel like this is one of those things that like plays into the whole like immigrant thing and like why people are afraid of them people like taking their jobs it's like because immigrants are willing to work so much harder mm-hmm. because it's like they don't yeah, have it. Yeah, I think that I'm lazy. Really? Yeah. Interesting. He calls me lazy constantly because he, he he's been working 12 hours a day every day <coughs> since he's come to this country and that was like what 94? Dang. Yeah. Non-stop. Fall. Workaholic. That's nuts. Yeah. Yeah, it is super crazy because I feel like, uh, like I said, I met a lot of people in college when I was going for a little bit, and a lot of them just were, like, so dedicated to, like, trying to fucking get their education, fucking figure shit out, and then, like, you know, start owning, like, you know, stupid, you know, real estate or, you know, do whatever they want. And it's crazy, too, because a lot of these places have, like, like, the currency exchange is so crazy so it's like if they get a job here and they send money back home it's like yeah, it's so much money so much more money yeah. i had a friend whose dad worked here but he had a family in the philippines and his dad the philippines <laughs> yeah dude it, dude that oh he was so fucking weird but he his dad worked here and he would send money back and they owned like three or four houses. Yeah. Oh, back in his hometown. Yeah, yeah. Dude, maids in uh, there's like a huge amount of like Filipino maids in the Middle East that sustain their families in like in the Philippines. It's it's pretty wild. Like women are like the breadwinners in uh, in the Philippines. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's been that way for almost like forty years, if not more. Yeah. What do you think that's all about? Um, it's just, they could get jobs, like, they could be maids and it's marketable, you know, and it's, I mean, they get treated like fucking shit in the, in the UAE and stuff, but, like, they get paid so much. Okay. Uh, would, uh, do you think that being a black woman comedian is easier or harder in Columbus? Uh, easier. Easier? Because people are, they're surface based. Like I fucking, it's, they think that oh they're you grew up poor they're they're so like they think that everything's generalized and it's like no nah, I could tell you that factually there are multiple I I don't really know if I should say this but like <laughs> I grew up in Tempe Arizona my dad was like a he was a cab driver like in a college campus and it's a huge like popular party town ASU oh, really? so he was making a pretty de- decent living. And I was an only kid, so, like, my parents... Oh, like, you're only a child? Yeah. My mom was, like, a coupon clipper, so we just saved money, and all the money was spent on me. Like, extreme yeah. couponing, or just regular? Oh, yeah, extreme. Like, did like, she get money back? Like, we would coupons at the crack of dawn. We would go to, like, the bad neighborhood and get, like, newspapers and clip them before I went to school. Dude, that's hilarious. I know. <laughs> yeah, we had, fun. we had like, angel soft for, like, 15 years in my household. Whoa. Yeah. That's nuts. I know. That's but, crazy. um... But they saved so much money that, like, not only I have an inheritance that's like thirty thousand now, which I haven't it's spent money. Anything, yeah. yeah, haven't. But like, I was provided for. Okay. In ways that I could say, like, when Ty Moore tells me stories about his childhood, I'm like, "Fuck, that's <laughs> rough, man." Like, I didn't grow up that way, and I could tell you, I grew up more privileged than isn't male it, comics that I know. Is it? Isn't that crazy? Yeah. That's one of the things that like really bugs me about this whole situation i've talked to chris johnson about this a little bit and it's like a lot of these people who are like super woke or whatever they're always like they're always like oh like well i read this book or i you know know a black guy who you know grew up in the hood (laughs) and it's like dude you don't know shit it's like do you like these they think that because they read books that and like it's a weird thing that like empathy sympathy or whatever it's like they think they can read it Mm -hmm. and that they can understand what it's like to live in that situation. It's like, you don't. And it's like, you can read every book in the fucking world and you you still, yeah. Yeah. Like I can read a book about Holocaust, you know, survivors and I'm not, Yeah, you. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? You know, I could have distant ancient relatives that are Jewish, Mm -hmm. but I'm still not going to understand. But you wouldn't know, like I've seen uh, all those like Holocaust movies and you wouldn't know that, Jewish people are raised with the whole panic of, yeah, the Holocaust might happen again. They're just born with that. Exactly. They're just like, hey, uh, procreate. <laughs> we might get killed again. 
it's they have to live with that impending fear it's like yeah. hey uh you remember like your grandparents yeah they they died with like six million other people but who knows if it'll happen again people are already anti-semitic so deal with it so let me ask you this do you think that uh like well and this might be different for you since you're somali and your family like came here like recently or whatever um would you say that there's like a similar panic for the black community uh, or like yeah you think it's so different it's different different but there are tragedies i, yeah, I yeah. would say but i wasn't raised with the panic of yeah police brutality as much as a person who was american black yeah. african-american and like yeah. who was an american that was born here where like my parents are racist like they're just like oh yeah we won't get treated like cops in the same way that like an african-american person would <laughs> they, yeah. they they think oh, that yeah, way yeah they do and it's like you're about the same. <laughs> i get that you think that you're privileged <laughs> but you're black and wait you were the you were the comedian that was telling me that so because you said your family's somali but you said that you are so black that your family has made fun of you before? Oh, yeah. They always... It was, like, a childhood thing. Really? Yeah, because I was, like, the blackest person. I also had, like, the thickest, like, hair texture in my family. Whoa. Yeah. What, what's that all about? Like, did... It's just... That's what is deemed, like, because they were colonized by, like, Italians, the English, and, uh, and the Arabs. So you just got more of the black? Yeah. That's like, I just, like, grew up with more black. But do you still have, like, the Italian shit in you? Yeah, yeah. My parents, well, my mom's side of the family, they all speak, like, Italian and, like, uh... Oh, yeah, shit! Uh, and, like, they were all colonized by him. And my dad is, like, more, like, Southern. Okay. Yeah. But your parents are both Somali? Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Dude, nice. Uh, do, have you ever gone? No. No? I don't know if I will. I, I'd want to go there, like, once, but, yeah. My grandma already died, and she was, like, the person that I wanted to visit. But, okay, okay. Yeah. Dang. So, uh, so you started doing comedy. You started, uh, you know, wh what? Oh, I didn't answer your question. Oh, yeah. me into doing comedy. Oh, yeah. What got you into it? Uh, I've loved comedy since I was, like, a kid. Like, okay. I, just, I grew up watching, like, sitcoms with my parents and all. Like, humor was just, like, a core part of my childhood. Then I, like, found stand-up when I was, like, 10 or 11, and that was, like... It became like my favorite thing instantly. Like, who's your yeah. favorite? Uh, every year I had like a different person. It, it, things like really changed for me when I found like a uh, Louis C.K. I think I was like twelve or thirteen, and I watched like live at the Beacon Theater, and I okay. couldn't believe that like stuff was so original. Dude, like, uh, he's he's definitely one of the guys that I feel like a lot of people. Take another rip. Yeah, go for it. I feel like uh, he is one of the guys that definitely has a uh, uh, not work <laughs> uh he definitely is one of those guys that oh, whatever it's all good you uh he is one of those guys that a lot of people have talked to me and they're like yeah he's like my favorite comedian it's funny too because it's a lot of women yeah. a lot of women yeah. really like lewis ck and yeah. it's like it's interesting to me like, uh he has i think he's like He's able to convey philosophical ideas okay. through humor. Okay. He's also like a, an incredibly like emotional person. Like if you've seen as like uh, Louis, like there are some hilarious like emotional moments. Yeah. That. When did that show stop? Uh, 2015. Okay. Yeah. Why did it stop? Was that um, because of all I the think shit? it was just no, <laughs> no. It was it, it happened like two and a half years before, but I think it was just over it. Okay. Because like if you watch season five, like it's different from one through four yeah i feel like uh that whole stuff like uh all those shows that were coming out it's like the same thing with like atlanta or dave like yeah I but he set a certain standard yeah like he he shot and filmed it with like his buddy who was like a professional photographer like he if you watch um he has like season one like like uh who are we talking about scenes. right now louis like the okay. way that he shot the show because it changed how comedic like shows were done after that like shows by other comics where like he would edit this like every episode on his macbook and like t take like different lenses for different shots and be very particular like he even like wrote the songs damn like for louis yeah yeah 
Damn. Yeah, he wrote it with uh, who's a he's a he's a very famous um, he's, oh Reggie Watts. Oh shit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And this is back in 2010, so it was like before Reggie Watts like truly blew up. So Louis C.K. Live at the Beacon. Yeah. That's what really blasted you off. Yeah, where I was like, I love this more than anything. So who? So would you say that he's probably been like the most influential? Yes. In sense of like, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, in comedy and like in life, like yeah. influential. I I like Louis because I feel like one of the like, and it's not because he said the N word, but it's like he was able to do you know that word is so taboo that no one can touch mm -hmm. it but he still found a way that yeah. he could use it and yeah. get you yeah. know i i mean at least as far as i saw yeah. he might have got backlash but not nearly as much as yeah. like you know what i mean as he joe rogan just got <laughs> yeah what happened with joe um I actually have no fucking clue. I because I just saw Lucas post some, or post something, and I was yeah. like, "What the fuck?" So then I looked, and I guess supposedly Joe, uh, like in like the course of however long he's been doing the podcast, he has used the N word a few times, and I guess he one of the times he he was talking. I guess all these p pieces have been taken out of like context or whatever. But I guess uh, he is always talking about it, and like, it, when he's talking about it, he's using it in terms of like when someone is saying it, or from like an excerpt of a book or something like that. I don't know. But then there was one time that he did say that he was trying to go see Planet of the Apes, and a taxi driver dropped him off, and they were like, "Whoa, did they drop us off in the middle of Africa or something like that?" And people got a lot of <laughs> like, hey, "Dude, I don't know, man." It's hey, this is. This is why China is going to ruin all of us because we are spending so much time over what a man says. Mm -hmm. This guy's just living his life, and it was like, let's th let's find all the all the times that he said one word. Yeah. Meanwhile, China is finding ways to control humanity Dude. and doing it efficiently. They are with this. Yeah. Why do you give a shit what a middle aged guy is doing? The man is just tossing kettlebell uh, ghetto kettlebells. Yeah. Hi, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> why do we care so much? Oh, shit. Every time I look at the news, like I scroll through Twitter like once a day, and I'm like, "What is wrong with us? What's yeah. going on?" What? So, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think China's going to fucking take over? We're going to run out of water. 2050, COVID's going to kill half of Americans. We either get fit or all the fat people die by 2030. That's for damn sure. Hell yeah. Yeah, which is a good thing. Uh, if you don't get disciplined by 2040, you're going to get killed. Yeah, because China's gonna make you fucking wear beige and work at Amazon <laughs> for like sixteen hours a day. You better have a fucking career or something to provide. It, Baking. That's my. That's gonna be my fallback. It. It is so. I need to learn Mandarin, dog. Yeah. Shit. I feel like a lot of people nowadays like just don't know how to do shit. Like. Uh, yeah, we just fucking stare at our phones. Yeah. Like we spend our lives staring at our phones. It blows my mind yeah. how often I'll be at a comedy show or I'll be, you know, and I do it sometimes, obviously, if I'm like <laughs> getting ready for my set or whatever, but it blows my mind how often you'll be at a comedy show or you'll just be out like in public and people are just on their phones mm -hmm. all the fucking time. And it's like, are you guys not aware yeah. of anything? It's like, an addiction. Yeah. It's like a genuine addiction in the same way that alcoholism is, sugar. Yeah. It's like, this is a problem that's a crisis yeah. in our lives. It, <laughs> and the thing for me is that, like, I guess, like, for me, it's, it might be a little different because I am a comedian and I like to watch people and whatnot. But, like, I just feel as if, like, a lot of people just don't know what's happening. Not just in, like, in regards of, like, what's happening, like, around them, but it's, like, even with themselves, like everyone's so quick to be like, Oh, I'm depressed or oh I'm like this or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like, have you exercised? Have you put your phone down maybe for a few yeah. seconds? Everyone always gets so upset with me because they're like, Eddie, you like don't know any of these movies, you don't know this comedian, or you don't know like this, and it's like, Yeah, because I don't fucking spend my fucking time mm -hmm. just consuming like worthless bullshit. This worthless bullshit that I consume is like information yeah. it's like so i'm like learning stuff constantly yeah. like i'm more of like a, a learn how to put 
you know, headlights in or learn how to, you know, build a furnace that melts aluminum type of guy. I'm not like a, hey, watch funny animals get hit in the head with poles or something like that. I'm not like that type of guy. You're not some guy that's like retired. (laughs) Some shit my uncle does. She's like, let's watch, let's watch Zebra get eaten alive. Uh, Which is my uncle on an an afternoon. I I have been doing that this weekend. This (laughs) this weekend was pretty nuts because I was like, oh, I'm snowed in. I'm not going to go out. Might as well watch fucking lions and tigers try to fight each other. Yeah, I watched Midsommar last night. What? That was actually fun. Okay. Like, it's a lot of people make it seem a lot worse than it is. I enjoyed it. Okay. I like the aesthetic. They made murder seem very nice. But um, I, I do watch comedy, but I don't watch it, like, all day long. Okay. Like, I'm kind of... Jo- uh, Toilet uh, has, like, a job where, like, he could just drive around for, like, an eight-hour shift and, like, pop in whatever podcast. And that's, like, that's living it up. But I don't do that all the time, but, like... Do you listen to podcasts walking. often? Yeah, yeah. Like, at least, like, for, like, a half hour a day or something like that. How many podcasts do you say that you keep up on? Uh, three or four? Okay. Yeah. I've definitely cut down. Who, uh, who is your favorite? If you're going to, like, check out a podcast, who's your podcast? Ooh, uh, Tim Dillon. Oh, dude, such yeah. a good podcast. Yeah. The Bonfire and, uh, and Tim Dillon are just okay. my rotations at the moment. Okay. I would say that right now I'm definitely uh, – I'll pop in. Like right at this point, Joe Rogan for me is like someone who if he's got a guest that I want to see, yeah. I'll pop on and I'll watch. <laughs> um, but I would say Andrew Schultz's podcast yeah. uh, with Akash Singh yeah. and Mark Agnon. Yeah, yeah. That one's good. Flavor Flagrant 2. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, Tim Dillon. Tim nice. Dillon's yeah. – because it's like – if I want to learn pop culture stuff really quick, yeah. I'll watch Flagrant 2. Yeah. And then if I want to learn the yeah. right-wing conspiratorial whatever, I'll watch Tim Dillon. Yeah. It's like it's oh. a good balance. Yeah, it's yeah. so good because he's... Oh, I like No Jumper sometimes. Who's that? With, like, no Jumper is uh, Adam-22. He's in, like, the whole, like, rap scene and, like, really, like, pop culture that's, like, about to blow up. Okay. But um, I like that for, like, uh, for just general, like, newer shit. Uh, have you thought about starting a podcast? Uh, I have been tentatively working on a pod. Well, it's we haven't been working on it in a long time. We, yeah, Tucker Uh-oh. and I have wanted to do a podcast. Oh for a shoot, while. that would be fire! Yeah, we recorded our first episode like a year ago. Oh, it's <laughs> a funny thing. Shoot. And like, um, we've just had like life like get in the way and stuff. Um, but we should be starting late this month. I'm hoping like he has more time now and I have a stricter schedule, but I'm um, hoping uh, February, early March. Hell yeah. Yeah. Dude, this is exciting. I, I would say that one of the things that I've noticed is that a lot of people, um, and I mean, I've he- heard you say this and stuff like that on stage and whatever, where it's like, this podcast isn't necessarily like the funniest podcast but it's interesting mm-hmm. and people like yeah. watch uh you yeah. know what i mean i had my friend who was on that hbo show which was interesting yeah. you know i i like to i and i'm trying to have more than just comedians on yeah. because it's like uh, like one of the biggest things that i have noticed especially during the pandemic and this is actually kind of the reason i started the podcast is that like i would be walking around with my dog outside and uh with my uh roommate at the time and we'd be walking around people would be like oh hey what's up eddie and i'd say you know hey what's up whatever your name is jerry or ed or you know whatever fucking their name is and he'd just look at me and he'd be like how do you know all these people and i'm just like i talk to them i yeah. ask them about shit you know we yeah. go beyond the fucking weather and it's like i just notice that people aren't paying attention to what's going on like mm-hmm. people don't know you know what music shows are happening people don't even know about comedy shows people don't yeah. even know about like the artists in town yeah and stuff it's like as that. if people who live in columbus don't live in columbus that's what i'm saying it's kind of like hey have you been to like a popular bar and they're like what's that street yeah what is high street i'm like why do you live here exactly what are you doing? i knew i i just met a guy or why well, i met him for a minute but i just recently learned that he doesn't know street names yeah he doesn't yeah i know t- or like people like simon who's a comic who recently moved to columbus but he is infatuated with the city for some reason was like what's giant eagle like he just asked like that question as if it's like a normal thing to ask in ohio 
what is one of the most popular grocery stores in the state? Leave your apartments, folks. It is kind of funny because I grew up in a small area, uh, and Ty and I talked about this because he's from like the similar area. Oh, Lima. Yeah, uh, yeah I'm from a uh, Toledo area, uh, and so we had close. Chiefs. Yeah. Which is like our version of like Giant Eagle. Oh yeah, I know the place. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I was like, when I moved here, I was like, what the fuck is Giant Eagle? Yeah. But then I was like, sounds like a Native American name. Yeah. So it's probably. <laughs> <Giant> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that what Black Bear was? Yeah. <laughs> Big Bear? Oh, dude. But, I mean, Walmart's the same everywhere. That's good. So. Yeah, it's consistent. Walmart and Kroger. What place do you like to shop? Oh, I go to all of them, dude. You go to all of them? I go What about Lucky's? Over. You go to Lucky's? Yep. I went to Lucky's the other day, like dude. right before the snowstorm. Dude, during the pandemic, they were doing those $5 rotisserie chickens. Dang. Dude, yeah. that shit Yo, was... Yo, they're $5 sandwiches. It's like the size of a foot long, and I'll, I just like have like one throughout the day. It's like, this is the shit. Fucking, I love that shit, yeah. man. They're um, produce, too. Like, on point. Okay. Yeah. Um... So you do a lot of, uh, so I know we're jumping all over the place, yes. but, uh, fucking you do like, you're just a very interesting person because you do comedy, you fucking do, um, you know, exercise, you start doing baking. Well, I mean, I don't know how long you've been doing it, but you've, uh, it'll be two years in May, in May. Tell me about that. Uh, it was like a quarantine thing. I was just fucking pulling my hairs out from like being so bored, but, um, it was like something that I've always wanted to do and scared me and I just started trying it and I failed for like the entire first month that I did it. I just kept on fucking up. Dang. But like I, I had so much time, like I had so much time on my hands. So I just kept on trying it. What's your favorite thing to yeah. make? Ooh, sourdough. Sourdough? Yeah. You, uh, you make your own st sourdough starter meal? Yeah. Yeah. How I, long is, how, how long has, yeah, how long have you had the sourdough starter that you've had now? Do you like reset it um, or do you have you had this one? No, since? it's the same guy. Damn. Yeah, From yeah. the very beginning? Oh, yeah. I, I've had it for about, yeah, 24, 20 months now. Yeah. Okay. It's cool. Do you eat a lot of non leavened bread at all? Um, no. Nah. No. No, it's usually leavened. Okay. Yeah. That, uh, that was one of the craziest things when I started like learning because I I work with a lot of like yeast and beer and stuff like that yeah. so I kind of understand how everything works mm -hmm. but I didn't understand that and this is something I learned in that industry is that like there's just you know yeast everywhere mm -hmm. and you can just fucking yeah. get yeah get yeast out of the fucking air yeah. like there's like sour beers yeah. there's fucking you know uh you know like you just said kombucha and stuff yeah. like that yeah and natural like living organisms yeah. and if you use like sugar and like Ugh. you just feed it with like water and sugar and because i was always like how did they how did they ever get all that shit to do all that bread stuff in the past and i was mm -hmm. like oh some person just like left yeah. it out for a little yeah. bit and it carbs got, are energy dude that give. Ugh. Fucking, that is insane. Energy. So you started doing sourdough first? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, like, everything else is... Sourdough is so hard that, like, making, like, a brioche or, like, just folding, like, a no-knead dough is nothing. Yeah. Like, it's so easy. You do everything by hand? Yeah. Okay, sweet. I'm, I'm too cheap to buy a KitchenAid. Yeah. I won't buy that till I'm, like, actually rich. I, yeah, I will say it's definitely better to do oh, everything by hand. Yeah. Because then... And this is my philosophy for everything, where it's, like, you start off doing everything by hand... And then you can get the convenience things yeah. because then you also then learn what things you need because yeah. then you're like, oh, uh, like I like this takes too much time. Mm -hmm. And while I'm trying to also do this. So instead, I'll just get like a grinder, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, whatever you need for whatever you're doing. Yeah. Um, what kind of flour do you use most of the time? Well, uh, King Arthur, uh, preferably bread flour because it has like 12.4 percent gluten. But their AP is pretty good. It's like eleven point seven, so it's like it's just a small margin. But the gluten structure is like so much easier. To Talk build. to me a little bit about gluten. What do you know about it? Uh, you gotta fold. You gotta fucking fold it up and stretch. Gluten and good fold. or bad? Good gluten, okay. big good. You have to don't don't have garbage bread. Just fucking eat decent stuff. Okay, that's the weird thing about I get I have a whole problem with like diet culture as a whole because like. It's whatever works for you, but like, don't demonize an entire category because either you don't have self control or maybe your body just doesn't agree with it. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say I. But build that gluten, dog. Have you ever made seitan? 
Uh, no, I want to try it though. It, I made it. It wasn't. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't great. Really? It, yeah. I mean, it was just because like maybe it wasn't. I didn't marinate it long enough, or I didn't. Maybe it was. I didn't fold it enough. Yeah. But like, it was c- probably close. But I definitely got more of a bread taste than uh, it was sti- like it was gross. most. It was just gluten, but I still had like probably too much starch in there, mm-hmm. or I took too much starch out. I don't know because the w- video that I watched, like he was like kneading it, got all that milky water out, and then he dumped it out into this thing, and he said that you can make use that starch to make bacon out of it and i never did that because i was like that's too much work so then i ended up just uh you know probably rinsing it too much because i feel like when you have some of the gluten in there it's supposed to give it a little bit of flavoring and then or or, i'm sorry starch the starch in there is supposed to give a little bit of flavoring and then depending on how much starch you leave in it you can like make beef or chicken or whatever so yeah it was weird and also the tying process was weird too like yeah. i didn't do that very well so that's uh, probably also yeah it's like, tough when you do things like for the first time it's pretty hard yeah 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 and it was one of those things that i tried that i was like yeah i probably <laughs> not gonna do that again yeah, it's like i'd rather just you know bake some chicken yeah. breast now. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um so you've been doing a lot of baking uh uh have you i see you bring a lot of that stuff to your comedy stuff a lot of times it's pretty good yeah, You're like, I want to do more stuff. You want to do more? I, I always like find. I I love like just getting high and like scrolling through like recipes. Okay. And just like finding things because I cook all the time. So I'm like, oh, I want to make this. Do you have like a specific schedule for your cooking? Nope. No. I should. I. It's about time I do now. But yeah, like, I was gonna say it's one of those things that I've been thinking about now because you know with comedy, especially comedy, and then like having a dog and having a 10 hour shift, you know what I mean? You just don't have time to like do anything. It's like you get home, you know, you can, you might be able to make something, you know, for, you know, an hour or two, you know what I mean? But like after the, like by then, you know, you're eating right before your set and that fucking sucks. No one likes to eat before your set. Yeah. I don't like being full before, but it's like, it's healthier if I do that, but I'm also like, uh, yeah, (laughs) I'd rather just eat at 1am. Yeah. I, I love getting those tacos, yeah. before the fucking yeah. set but yeah, the that taco place right by juniors yeah I, I, people don't understand why i tell people to go to the taco place right by juniors instead of juniors but it's because mex press is that fucking good dude uh, the food trucks they're, in just, Columbus. they're perfect it's like when i was 21 Exotico. i started going out all the time yeah. uh street meat yeah. just uh euros just yeah. everywhere you just always are drunk yeah. or just pjs yeah. i mean that's not Kebab food truck time on, yeah on hudson oh. yeah, that guy you get the fries and garlic sauce you've got a good night that's a fucking good night so let's see so we got baking yeah muslim we talked about your muslim yep. stuff you yes. started off uh you started off doing it okay. in the uh in like the little you know headwear what why did you stop was that just because you well, stopped following the religion or Uh, was that like a it was like i was waiting it out like i wanted to take it off i just didn't i couldn't find the courage to stop dang and that took a long time so would you say that like being in that religion and like because like you that's something interesting Mm because i've always wondered this about like you know i have like people who have family that live in china they can't yeah. like talk about certain shit on the phone with their family <laughs> yeah. because they'll get in trouble or whatever um would you say that this that that fear has uh permeated into like your life like you know what i mean like yeah. is there does that like uh, make you more hesitant to do things uh it used to it doesn't anymore but it, it took some time that was something that i dealt with when i first like did shrooms was like all the religion trauma oh I, re- I felt guilt i was like oh i want to drink but like i oh, this is bad because no I, drinking I, at all yeah it's a hard hardcore no drinking no bacon like that's don't ever do that but Damn. like i had so much now? guilt oh yeah oh, it's like, <laughs> it's it's fucking, i always i love using like bacon grease to, like roast like potatoes oh so good um but like drinking too where i was like i was 21 and i was like i, st- I want to drink but like i i feel anxious about this this is making me uncomfortable so when i did like shrooms i just sat there for like hours just like thinking about it um is it one of those things have do you have a lot of uh muslim jokes no 
No. No. Is that another thing because you're like afraid or No, I just close the chapter. I'm like I don't identify with this. I also don't like it's it's kind of like uh I'm not a part of this community and I know how touchy feely it gets cuz people who are in it they're offended that I'm not. Like I already know that I'm not like a preferred like oh, Damn. I don't want to you know associate with you. So I'm like I don't really care about this. I don't I don't respect a belief system enough to even like give it thought. Yeah. Like I don't want it to like take rent in my head. Um what would you say is your your like normal writing process? Like how do you go about like when you go to sit down and write stuff like how do you go about like getting a joke together? And uh, is there like a you know a specific process that you go to is there like a specific yeah. comedian that you listened to a long time ago or something or uh, no i just write um i just wake up and usually something like i i usually wake up and go on a walk and at that point i start like thinking of something and then like drink my coffee at some point keep like writing and when i'm at the gym like i continue like tagging something and then i do the set listen to the bits and okay sit down at night or something something i feel like i have a problem with is that my brain likes to uh like uh super focus on specific things yeah. like do you have that issue too like if i'm like trying to think about a joke and it's like oh shit yeah. like i have this joke idea but like i don't know how to like finish it like do you get stuck or do you just kind of like drop it and move on and then you'll come back to um, it um i I usually do the set again. Like I do like an, I do that joke again. Um but sometimes I've like before like my wig snatching joke which used to be like a closing joke for me. I when I first came up with that joke, I just kept on trying to tag it for like 2 hours. Okay. Like I was just like like I thought that I was like, going crazy cuz I just like stood there for like 2 hours trying to like figure out how to tag it. Wow. But um but it's it you just like keep on doing it until like it, if it doesn't get a reaction then it's not worth it like yeah. i had a joke about arugula and lucas is like why do you do that joke and i was like i it's, it's about time i throw it away dude like, I, had I tried a, it three times at shrunken i had a joke like that when i was when i first started i tried to do a joke about fucking shredded cheese or some shit <laughs> and uh, i don't know exactly and chris always talks to me about this he always tells me that like johnson he always will say like he thinks that like i was trying to do what i thought i was supposed to be doing or something where it's like <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's some old man yeah, yeah, yeah. Mind just, tricks. Yeah, yeah that's what i'm saying it's like you think you want to be like this but you really not like yeah, yeah. this it it feels really good <laughs> I mean, too. let me tell you something i really <laughs> wish that like chris johnson was that person that wasn't like super like chill Dude. he's such a like chill guy that looks like he knows like karate i know did you, did you see him square up at the uh fucking shrunken yeah, head yeah, dude, dude yeah, i, I thought i was laughing at him yeah. all night for that i was like dude i have never seen you take a pose yeah he looks like a fucking anime character yeah he was like, and i was like damn son it's like he's ready to go i love chris yeah he, he could be like a superhero like stunt double he could yeah. he could have been like fucking yeah, you know, Chad, Mackey's, like, chadwick double. boseman's <laughs> fucking Ch <laughs> black panther <laughs> he uh but he on like we were doing a set it was a uh, after brew dog i went to shrunken head and he was like dude i really wish i could have a video of the set that i first saw you do and then had this video and then we could show like the videos right next to each other you're like a completely different comic yeah. and it feels good to hear that because i'm like a lot of times yeah. i feel like i go through that like am i doing this right like or whatever and uh what would you say so and this is something else that i've also noticed but it's also open mics and i feel like a lot of us don't do a whole lot of shows but what would you say um is like joke rotation like so if you're going to be doing a joke so like when i go out to like open mics and i mean everybody makes jokes about this um we always see the same comedians doing like the same exact jokes mm -hmm. um what would you say is like not the correct but your preferred like joke rotation like uh, how often do you do a joke before you're like all right like when you were like oh, did you do your police barista joke and i was like no and you're like good and i was like 
shit. And then you, but like how, so the question is, is like, how often do you do a joke before you're like, all right, this is either good or I'm done with it before, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? There isn't like a certain number of times. Okay. Because like every joke is different. Yeah, yeah. Like, um, like my vaccine joke, I came up with that one uh, in May of 2021. Okay. And that's a joke that, like, I didn't know that it was good till, like, two weeks in. Like, I just kept on doing it and, like, tagging it. And eventually, like, it was, like, it got hard enough laughs. And I think just by listening to it, you're like, okay, this one's really getting, like, a great laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, like, certain comics, like, when they laugh at a joke. I'm like, okay, this is good. And uh, how, do you often... Oh, sorry. Uh, do you often, like, write jokes... And then, like, that night, do them on stage? Or do yeah. you, like, okay. Yeah, like, almost every day. Hell like, yeah. I'll do that. Hell I'll, yeah. Some people, like, don't do, like, a joke, like, on a showcase. Like, they're like, oh, I'm not going to do a single new joke. But I'll, tr- I'll try to, like, sneak one in. Yeah. I'm like, I believe in this one. Yeah. Or I'm like, I know this one's going to do well. I was just watching a video where they were talking about, like, rules of comedy. Or it was, like, three yeah. golden yeah. rules of comedy. And it was, yeah. like, w- number one, be funny. <laughs> number two was uh what was it number two was never start with new material yeah he said shit sandwich he, yeah he's like he's like he's like you can you can you know do a new joke but he's like just don't start off with it he's like i know that you might be in the shower thinking oh my god this is gonna be so fucking good and then you get on stage and it doesn't get anything he's like <laughs> that's that's all the things that you do in your first year yeah like i remember doing that at an open mic and it, like two hours later watching doc the documentary comedian and colin quinn says that and i'm like fuck that's what I fucking did. <laughs> like you learn to not do that yeah you're just like i tried and true first if you want to sneak that guy in you'll do it were you quick to jump in on talking to people or were you pretty slow because you seem like pretty pretty nervous or whatever i for our comedy scene i was relatively quick like i started becoming friends with like logan like three months in hell yeah like but um i felt anxious with like certain people like it was just different like logan and i got along because we were both like stray cats and like lucas it took like about like a year and a half for us to like become like friends and i was like i was like intimidated by him like there are certain people that i'm like i'm intimidated by you who are you intimidated by the most i'm not intimidated by anyone okay, anymore okay. but like i'd say like ian miller like he was kind of like someone who was getting booked and like was like getting stuff in our comedy scene and i was like oh he's one of those like scary cool comics i like i like ian yeah because he is. He's, he's a cool guy b- the reason why i like ian is because i feel like he is like the only comedian who truly has his foot in both doors and like the woke scene yeah. And the like, and like yeah, the yeah. you know edgy scene because yeah. he's like he doesn't care yeah. and he understands both sides. He yeah. grew up in the hilltop does, or whatever, yeah. so it's like, yeah. so that's why I love him so much yeah. because he pushes back against everybody, yeah. and that's like the thing that yeah. like we need more of that. Yeah, you know what I mean? Oh, definitely. Like for people, if you're going to stay in our scene, it's better to be like Ian. Yeah. If you're like, oh, I'm here in Columbus and this is my home, then yeah, you should be good to everyone and like be. A, he's such a great storyteller. Yeah. Like, I love, like, his, like, cadence. Like, yeah. his Wendy's joke. He did that on Monday. Uh, so great. Who would you say is your favorite local comic? Ooh, that's a tough one. If you were, like, if it you had to... It depends. If, yeah, if you are like, hey, there's three shows going on. Mm-hmm. Three, I don't know, of the best comedians in Columbus. We're just talking Columbus comedians. So, or it like, would have to be, like, a specific... There has to be... I can't generalize. Okay, okay. Is there like a do you would would like, you would you say that you have like different uh, favorite comedians for different styles? Um, because like Ian, so I would say Ian Miller. Like if I had a top five, Ian Miller would be in my top five. Yeah. Uh, someone who else is in my like top five would be like a uh, Peter Brick. Yeah. Peter Brick yeah. and Joel He's Good. He's so underrated. Dude, I was talking to him, uh, and he was talking about how he wants to he wants to get a dry bar special. Yeah. So he wants to he's trying to find like a like a venue and stuff like that so you yeah. can do like a 30 minute or 45 minute thing so that'd be fucking yeah. dope i yeah, fucking miss would. him he's always doing funny shit yeah but he's great he's so talented but you don't have like a like a person that you'd want to watch no it depends on the day because okay. 
what mood you're in yeah it's easier for me to like to pick my like my favorite like comics from other scenes than like okay than our own homegrown scene because okay. it's like we're still growing yeah we and that's the other crazy thing is too is like, xavier would be in my top three really yeah hell yeah, yeah. you know what um xavier shana and samson dude those are my top three yeah it's so funny because I was just talking to uh, Samson the other day, and I always say this to everybody, but like he is so, like, smart. Yeah, it's like crazy yeah. how smart he is, and yeah, he doesn't necessarily do jokes in like, you know, the standard format. He's not like doing punchlines necessarily yeah. all the time or whatever. But like, the way he does, like. If you're gonna say anybody does talking comedy, yeah. he does it the best. Yeah, he's you know? so conversational. Yeah, yeah. It's the only person that I could compare him to is Patrice O'Neill, and I know that it's been done often, but like he just he thinks in jokes. Yeah, like he doesn't need a notepad, but he has one. Yeah, I fucking love Samson. Yeah, yeah like he'll he'll like come out like once a week now, and it's just like, oh, you're just crushing. Yeah, and I like miss two minutes of that because fucking. <laughs> <laughs> so like it just Tim's is like talking to me or like someone else is like oh fuck Samson's only here for like five minutes and it's annoying yeah he yeah he was he's super humble about it too he doesn't want to admit yeah. that he's like you know super good yeah. he's like dude I just talk I just ramble yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like yeah but a lot of comedians do that and yeah. they're not uh, you don't yeah. want to hear yeah. <laughs> the last uh, thing I want to hear is fucking <laughs> <laughs> Jordan uh, uh, so just ramble on oh god oh dude and there, yeah, there's a lot of comedians too that I love. There's like a few key words that they'll say, and I'm like, oh, they're about to do this joke. I can't wait. <laughs> Let's see what the crowd. I love it when it's a full room and it's like a joke. You're like, I don't know. Like, you know, a lot of people will like laugh at other people's jokes and they're like, oh, like, you know, w you know, this joke is bad or whatever. And then like you get a full room and then you're like, oh. Let's see what this joke yeah. does. Yeah, well, to how? People. What, what does it weigh down? Like, <laughs> and, and it happens. Like there are times where, like, also had like a great set. Like, uh, like, like it was not last, not last not, night, but the Friday before. Dude, crushed. So crushed. good. And I told him, I told him that I was like, dude, that was like the best set. Yeah. It was a good. It was an yeah. easy crowd. But like, but they were into jokes. Like, yeah, they were. Good that that was like, he did it. Oh yeah, yeah. Because like I feel like sometimes he'll do his jokes, and I'm just like. I'm just like, ah, oh, dude, like some of these are like really good. And like, these guys aren't even laughing, yeah. but like f that Friday, dude, like I, I came off that. I, I wrote, that was actually probably one of the first times in a long time that I had wrote a joke that day. I didn't do it at the showcase mm -hmm. or whatever you want to call that. Yeah. And then, uh, fucking. And then when I went to shrunken, I did do it and it worked yeah. and it was like good. And yeah. I was like, hell yeah, this is like, I feel confident yeah. that I'm like starting to get it because I'm like yeah. not to the point where I can like think of a joke and then try it that night and then, you know, get yeah. laughs. But yeah. now I'm like, okay, now I'm like on the track. Cause somebody was, I was watching another something about humor or whatever. And they were talking about like, whenever you have a conversation and then you leave that conversation and then you're like, Oh shit, I could have said this, or I could have said that. Or whenever you get off a of stage, they were saying that, that that's, that's a good thing yeah. because that's what's happening is yeah. your brain is like trying to make those connections and eventually like let's say it takes you two hours and then the next time it takes you an hour and eventually you'll get to the point where it's like in the moment where you're like something happens yeah. and you can make a joke about yeah. it instead of it being like oh fuck it would have yeah. been so funny to say this or something like that yeah. and i have a lot of those moments yeah. all the I, time more recently i mean i think writing helps helps with that like, yeah drastically but i have this at shrunken head but for some reason my crowd work kills harder than the jokes at shrunken your crowd work is good though yeah but it's like it kills like in other rooms my jokes kill yeah more than the crowd crowd work but at shrunken like there was some guy that got like a phone call and i just started like riffing on his like baby mamas because he was like some hilltop guy <laughs> and that that was like the hardest like those were the hardest laughs that i've had at shrunken in a while it is weird i will say that like shrunken head it has kind of not like transformed but like it almost seems as if the uh the crowd that comes there for comedy they know that it's there like they're there for comedy now mm -hmm. i feel like now it's not like a surprise sometimes it is but most of the time it's not and it's like i feel like 
that mic a lot of people do like the crowd work they like yeah. to get shit on they like to like have fun or whatever yeah. not you know maybe not like you know making fun of them but like they like the interaction where mm-hmm. it's like other rooms yeah. you notice like i feel like uh saber pine so- so- sometimes like that too where like the crowd gets a little too involved yeah. you know like all right dudes like yeah they want attention yeah 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 so and that's hard to, and it's hard to like also i i have a hard time reading rooms sometimes mm-hmm. so it's like it's hard to know like oh this room you know like yeah you know topical yeah. or crowd work yeah. or but they... just watch like certain comics like you know every comics genres my standard for like an audience like if, I, if i'm feeling way too lazy to watch everyone i'll just watch how xavier does and xavier is a good litmus test because he's he's someone that's able to make everyone laugh dude yale yeah. He's been killing it. Yeah, oh, he's I been love killing you. the ho- the host. Game. Oh yeah, I th- I told him I uh, messaged him yeah. on Saturday and I was like, dude, like, like I know this is like yeah. weird, just me messaging you, but like, good shit. Like, yeah. you need your oh, own he's room. Awesome. Yeah. yeah, as I say, you need your own room. Or yeah, something. I'm gonna keep booking him for my show because he's every time I have his him, crowd he work just is phenomenal. Yeah, he's got definitely great got, jokes. Yeah, like, he's such a brilliant joke writer. He has like the whole like comedy package yeah like he could do impressions so well, well and yet he doesn't utilize that well, weapon yet <laughs> yeah i was just, that's one of yeah i feel like there's a lot of things and i feel like that's an issue with columbus comedy that like mm-hmm. i have too where it's like i have like a lot of like music or impressions that i want to start doing but it's like you know the scene it's not that i'm like afraid of the scene or whatever but it's just like it's so different i feel mm-hmm. like than my other comedy that like i don't want to like ju- I, I don't want to yeah i don't want to become the music comic i yeah, don't want to become you would be huh you'd immediately get roasted i know remember that one time that like def showed up with like an acoustic guitar oh, got, dude. like we still talk about that it's not that's what i'm saying <laughs> yeah and, and then uh well and i do a lot of uh like ukulele playing and uh, then tucker Tuck, I remember Tucker. He posted. Like, what are like, you gay? Yeah, he's like, he's like, he's like, don't even record that music. He's like, what? yeah, your fag you- guitar. <laughs> this is an accurate impression. Of <laughs> I miss, I miss Tucker with like the really long hair. I'm yeah. glad that he's getting it back because yeah. when I first met him, that's what he had. And yeah, I was like, yeah. damn, son, this guy, he he was just, like roasting people. Yeah. and I feel like that was, it's like hard because I know that like when I had long hair. A lot of people were confused because they were like expecting, and I wore a lot of cat shirts and stuff. So people were confused because they're yeah. like, "Is this guy going to talk about Are drugs and stuff like that?" And yeah. now he's like talking about race topics. Like, yeah. "Whoa, what the fuck's yeah, happening?" Like, I thought you did acid and fucking went to went to Whole Foods, dude. <laughs> Are you that's it. That's that's kind of what the I city you did this to me. Yeah. The city did this to me. <laughs> Turn you into a hippie? Yeah, dude. <laughs> Why'd you live in Clintonville, dog? I don't know, dude. I, <laughs> dude, that was crazy. I will say Clintonville was probably the f- mo. Like I always talk about Clintonville because it's the best. Yeah. But like, I loved how close I was to protests. Yeah. And I was. Oh yeah. I, I still drive down like North Broadway to someone protesting d- something. something. And I just like honk and they're into it because I'm black. At and this like, point, yeah! dude. It's, at this point, it's hard to know if it's like homeless people or protesters because it's like <laughs> <laughs> like in Clinton, no, They're fucking wearing P- Patagonia puffers, dude. And it was also so crazy because when the pandemic hit, like it, obviously there's homeless people yeah. on Clintonville, like you know on yeah, High Street yeah. and stuff like that. Like but a like couple. it was almost like as soon as the media was like homeless people are like jumping through the roofs it was almost like they were placing homeless people just <laughs> random places just like the front like of Kroger. Victims. yeah it was yeah. like i was like bro where did you come from <laughs> i haven't seen you in forever like who are you going to this kroger for five years <laughs> yeah. where are you from it's like that scene in like louis where like they replace like a homeless guy with like another homeless guy yeah. on the street, <laughs> and he's the only person that sees it oh dude that shit was so nuts yeah. but my favorite was when i went to the protest dressed as trump man at first people were cool with it but then they were like okay he's not like being weird he's yeah. just being fucking a dork so yeah. instead of it being like oh he's trying to spread you know right wing whatever yeah. but you're just it, out there dude it, i will say it was super funny because there was a girl with a megaphone <laughs> and i was louder with her than her with the megaphone that was how crazy it was <laughs> she's like, like you see what god wanted dude <laughs> well she came up to me and yeah. told me hey can you like quiet down and i was like you have a megaphone. I was like, this is an issue. Yeah. I'm sorry I took theater for yeah. a little bit. <laughs> like, it's like, try projecting. Yeah, exactly. 
I'm like, try talking to a mic with a room full of people who don't want to listen to you. Like, get over it, lady. It's so funny. There, there's this like person that started comedy that's like a, a like a USG, like a, an OSU. Uh, v- I think she's like the president of like the OSU student government, oh. and at OSU the student government yeah, like, yeah. gets shit on. Like they're they're so fucking annoying. Really? Like they don't really care about any issues, but they're like, hey, every month they'll just send like a newsletter. It's like, hey, let's not be racist this month. <laughs> it's like for, like thirty Zendayas, and this person started comedy. It was like, oh yeah, so this is my ethnic identity. This is who I am, and I'm gonna tell you about how I feel. It's like wh- when people show up to comedy and try to do them like do you not understand what this is entirely yeah it's like this is a joke we're all sad crazy people yeah we're all yeah gonna... it's like what are you talking about how how many hopes you have <laughs> in your fucking internship at the wa- at the huff po god i hate people like that in the amount of people joining comedy right now who aren't doing comedy yeah. is also yeah it's kind of like the gym yeah like wow actually that's important. actually yeah. a really good yeah. analogy yeah it's like you see all these fucking comedians like actually like, doing this is my new year's resolution <laughs> i'm like this is my se- i don't have a healthy life right now <laughs> every night i go to sleep at 4 a.m and wake up at 8 a.m in a panic because <laughs> i have to come up with new jokes and i panic constantly <laughs> That is a really good analogy. Yeah. I like that one. Going to the gym. Yeah, yeah, like uh, that like Liz um, chick. She started coming out again. What? Yeah, I don't... I feel like she's fucking Xavier. I'm not sure. I don't really give a shit, but it's a plausible oh, question where oh. I'm like, ah, he has a whole bit that he tells that's not the cream of his crop. <laughs> that joke is definitely not the best that he's got. It's funny, but it, come on. Come on, Xavier. But like, I'm like, is he fucking her or is she like really trying to do comedy seriously? You said, so who is this? A Liz. Do you remember? No. So like, she used to come out last year, like in the beginning of last year. Okay. And like, Xavier like became friends with her and she's like a pretty upper middle class okay. white chick. Okay. Yeah. Maybe I have Nice seen person. Her. I'm just like. Maybe I've seen her around recently. Oh. There was a girl. Has she been around? Yeah. She used to come out like once a week last year. Like Has she been bit. around recently? Yeah, the last two Fridays. Okay. Yeah, yeah I definitely saw her then. Yeah, yeah. yeah you can't yeah. miss her. Yeah, because yeah, like uh, <laughs> when Co- when Omicron was like really popping off, like the first two weeks of of January, nobody was coming out. Now there's like a lot all of a sudden. You went out during the pandemic a lot. Yeah, I fucking constantly. I really wish I would have. It's like my heroin, man. I, I yeah, I definitely feel like a lot of people nowadays like. A lot of people were like, uh, yeah. you know, during the time, everyone was complaining, but yeah. I really wish, I, like, I regret yeah. that, like, out of all the things that yeah. I regret in my life, that's the yeah. one thing that I I regret. didn't realize that, like, meeting those comics, like, drastically improved how I did comedy, mm-hmm. but also, like, how well I'm doing right now. Yeah. Like, it's huge. Yeah. And, and we talked about Yale a little bit, and, like, he went out during the pandemic, too, yeah. right? Yeah, and, yeah. Like, yeah. One of the things I think that really helped him out, and I mean, this is a problem that I have, is that I'm less like over social. Mm-hmm. And like when he first started, he didn't talk to anybody. Yeah. Like he literally just yeah. sat in the fucking yeah. corner and he just like watched, yeah. wrote. Just there with his comp book, like yeah. constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I, he knew me because he was at the at the kill tony show like he sat like in the audience oh shoot and was like hey i saw you there and i like met it i I used to call him like yale for like (laughs) like right before the pandemic started (laughs) but like i knew him briefly but he was just like a quiet guy and like now like he's one of the funniest people that i know like just a great hang yeah it's 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 yeah he's definitely one of those guys that i really want to like you know build a friendship with more because he's you know i feel like out of everybody in columbus yeah. he's probably the closest to my style like as in yeah. terms of like the stuff he talks about and everything yeah. so as in terms of like you know yeah. I, so i definitely feel like yeah. i want to uh get can to i know make him an offensive little... joke yeah okay. do it um you're like the you know when you go to like the sushi place and they have those like fish eggs that are like oh this is like caviar but it's like a dollar extra you're like that but like yale's beluga that fucking that you fish for in in, the, in Croatia, where they're like, "Hey, you have to spend a hundred thousand dollars, but you might get arrested by the U.S. Embassy." That's like Yale. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, he's yeah, dude. I fucking uh, yeah, he's really good. And uh, him and Chris Toilet, 
Yeah. Chris, Chris is really oh, you funny. Get, would you get them together? Like, so? I'm trying. Yeah. 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 I was gonna say because yeah. I know that I talked to Yale about it. He said yeah. he'd be down. I'm also trying to get uh, Samson and Christian on here. Yeah. And because oh, that'd be fun. Great, Next yeah. week we have uh, Erskine. Yeah. So that's gonna be. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's gonna be. Yeah, good. Ty's an interesting dude. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. especially because with his podcast, he's been doing a lot of like he's been doing a lot of kind of like what I'm trying to do, where it's like he's been just having ra- like crazy yeah. random people. He had yeah. Dusty on talking about politics. Yeah. He had other people talking yeah. about love and stuff like yeah. that that i yeah. love that shit yeah getting like people to talk about what they're passionate about is like pretty dope yeah especially so. because and this is like something i noticed after i left like the restaurant industry but like people are much more interesting when mm-hmm. they're when they actually have like dreams and aspirations yeah. when they're not Big just time. drinking every day and yeah. doing drugs it's so yeah. nuts i mean i'm doing drugs every day well yeah yeah but you, but but yeah you do stuff yeah. yeah on top of that like yeah. you're not just doing heroin yeah you're doing heroin yeah. on top of comedy yes that <laughs> straight black tar dude i fucking huff that shit um yeah yeah but it's it's fun because like having i wish i was like a full-time like don't have to spend a minute at work comedian because yeah. i could fucking like bake in the morning and like, yeah just chill out like throughout the day but like it's still I enjoy doing the things that I do, and that's like something that I'm really happy about. Yeah, yeah. I uh, yeah, I definitely think it's important to have like different passions, and well, and also something that you notice when you look at like real life artists, like and not just like you know, just comedians or musicians, and even them. But like if you look at like people who are really yeah. out there, yeah. they're not just doing comedy. Yeah. They're not just doing music. They're writing screenplays. They're writing skits. They're writing... A lot of them are like Casey Neistat. Like, he's a fucking writer. Like, he was someone that, like... I think he got into, like, a car accident. Or, like, it was some sort of accident in, like, in his... Uh, 20s where a doctor was like hey you'll never be able to walk again and then like became a marathoner on top of being like an accomplished filmmaker yeah like that's an incredible like i look at that and i'm like oh that's that's inspiring yeah and and, it, and i think and well this is why i find it very interesting people who come from like uh either from like other countries or even people who come from like super religious backgrounds because they are the ones that tend to have like the most uh <clears throat> rigidity like where it's like i'm gonna do this like you can't tell me i can't this is either god's will or you know i feel that it's my destiny to do this and it's like those people are the best people because they have like oh yeah i like to walk in the woods and read you know fucking books and it's like whoa shit tell me more about these you know woods walks that you're going on like what are you doing so that's why i love having people on because it's like one of those things that like oh yeah Halima's a comedian, but like she also does, you know, baking, and yeah. she, you know, used to be a I'm Muslim. Listen to Case File a lot. Yeah, exactly. Oh, <laughs> Case File. Yeah, I give myself the heebie-jeebies. Like I'll just get high and walk around for like two hours. And I'm like, oh fuck, the serial killer in Melbourne. He's <laughs> fucking cutting off women's arms. He's gonna, gonna be change. here now. Yeah, there's like, oh my god, he has what? He's six foot four, glasses, looks like an engineer. What? <laughs> and then yeah, you're just uh, like, I'm actually turned on a little yeah. bit right now. Yeah, just like, some chick like walking her dog, like watching me like turn around and spin in circles. <laughs> dude, that was something that happened. Uh, Tim's and I were walking around, and he's just like, yeah, dude, like everyone always just thinks I'm so f- weird. You know what I mean? And we're walking, <laughs> and then he stops and says, I don't want to walk this way. Let's walk this way. And I'm just, like, thinking to myself, I'm like, dude, like, I know that, like, that's not, like, a super weird thing, but, like, if someone was watching you, that's weird. To just be walking and then just turn around and walk somewhere else, like, you're freaking people out when you do shit like that. I do that. I do that shit, too, man. Yeah. Like, the other day, I was, like, walking, and I was, like, walking towards, like, uh, I was walking south on high, like, around the short north. The moment I saw, like, the homeless people in front of the UDF. Like, there were, like, ten homeless people just scattering around. I, like, immediately, like, u turn. I was like, oh, this is not fucking happening. Yeah, but at least there was a reason yeah. for that. If someone was like, oh, she yeah. saw... Like, they would be weird. watching and they'd be like, okay, yeah. she saw those homeless people. Yeah. It's not like you're just walking in an alley and you m- m- get halfway in the alleyway and you just turn around, yeah. like... Oh, dude. It, is. it was, like, at least 500 feet away, so I was like... Oh, yeah, that's, that's a weird. distance, damn. Yeah, yeah, there's a decent... But I just, like, saw him from afar. There were, like, enough of them where they were, like, they could fucking out... They could outdo me <laughs> They right could now. out-ask yeah, or yeah. change me. Yeah, yeah, they'll fucking... <laughs> I have so much change, they're yeah. gonna get it all. Yeah, I'm like, I know, I didn't give you a single dollar ever. Oh, shit. So, uh, f- fucking Halima. 
Uh, you do a lot of shows. You yes. got any shows coming up recently? Oh, yeah. Other uh, the ones that haven't been canceled? Uh, yeah. Tomorrow I'll be at Go Bananas. This isn't going to come out tomorrow. Not tomorrow unless be, you're amazing at editing. I, can, I mean, we don't edit, so we just literally... Oh, sick. Yeah. That's cool. If you want, I mean, we can fucking put yeah. it up tomorrow if you want, or tonight even if you yeah, want. Yeah, if you want to do that. Yeah, yeah as that, see, try to get people out there awesome. or whatever. Yeah, go bananas tomorrow at two p.m. Uh, it'll be a fun show. I will also be at Go Bananas on uh, Wednesday again. Go Bananas on Monday. Damn. Uh, go Bananas regular? Uh, I, I'm doing showcases. I do want to host at a comedy club. Like, that's a goal, but I don't really know how attainable that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I don't want to get my hopes up with that, like, new funny bone stuff, and I'm like, oh, that would be so fucking cool. I, this is what I'm going to tell every single person, I, and I didn't do it before, and I don't know how Henry runs it or anything, mm-hmm. but this is all I want to say. Don't get your fucking hopes up. Yeah. If you're fucking hilarious, maybe a little bit, but don't get your hopes up because yeah. I feel like a lot, like a lot of people, like yeah. you just said, and I get this from people all the time when they start comedy. And Brian Harris was down my throat for like two months about it, and he's like, "How do we get the funny bone?" I, I, dude, I'm mm-hmm. telling you, like the only way you're gonna get on the funny bone stage is if you know people. That's yeah. the only way. Yeah. You like it doesn't matter how fucking funny you are if you, no one knows you, yeah. they're not gonna approach you unless yeah. you're that funny. But you yeah. have to be, like it's like a football yeah, player. Be like a headliner. Yeah, you have to you have to be able to put in three hundred yards a football game yeah. before someone is like, hey, dude, like, do you want to cut? Like, yeah. no one's gonna be like, oh, he's you know putting in a hundred yards a game or yeah. something like that. Like. We're going to go, like, yeah. he's got potential. Yeah. No one says he's got potential. Which, is it, like, do you have to outdo, like, the comedians that run the show? Huh? Is that, like, do you have to outdo the comedians that run the show? No, 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 no. But what I'm saying is that just, like, a lot of people, like, a lot of people like to think it's a lot more meritocracy than it is. Yeah. And I feel like it's not. Yeah, it's not. There's a lot of, there's Especially a lot Especially with that specific club. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot it's of not. unfunny people that I've been hearing have been getting on the stage and it's like... <laughs> 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 so, uh, I'll say this. I saw a comic uh, host for Dave Attell uh, that I was like, oh, I could get a lot better than that. <laughs> like, we could do, we could be doing a little bit. You could get a little, you know, this is, a, it was kind of like, oh, what was comedy like in 2003? <laughs> and this person just popped up. It was like Comedy Central. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was like, oh man, why did they have like Henry that weekend? You know, Henry's um, a great comic. Like he's someone that deserves to, the Xavier yeah. should be working that. That's why I am so upset at Xavier yeah. because I feel like, yeah. He has everything now. He if has, he left Columbus, he would be successful. He li- I know that for a fact. Dude, like, but he has, like, all the followers yeah. on, you know, yeah. TikTok and Instagram. It's yeah. like, you could easily walk up to the Funny Bone and be like, I could sell this show out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And even if he could, you know, even yeah. if it was, like, a lie, yeah. he could be like, hey, I have yeah. all these people. They'd yeah. be willing to come, whatever. But I think as a comic, you want you want to be able to work the club circuit. Yeah. Like, you want to be able to be like, oh, I started opening, and then you start featuring, yeah. and you... So maybe he's doing it more organic way, yeah, I guess. Which yeah, which is better. Every scene should. Columbus yeah. should have had this in place. That's yeah. the fucking thing that I'm like, no, people should be working towards hosting, and nobody knows what to do. Yeah. Like, Ian Miller should have been hosting a, if we had a club that was like hey we're gonna have a showcase and book you if you're really good like ian should have been hosting for a lot of comics at yeah. the funny bone if yeah they were a club that encouraged their comedy scene now do you think that it could also be partly because some of us are bad at marketing no, no. i don't think it's they could have they could come out to showcases yeah oh and, yeah you're right. and like they could go out they could they could like sit at shrunken on them on one monday out of the month and watch how everyone does yeah even though it's like it's n- sort of like new material night but you're still doing a shit sandwich and working on material yeah you could get a good gauge on our comedy circuit that's the thing the liberty funny bone is a club that like does that shit yeah they're like the people the people that work for them do go and see other shows and they're like hey this is a comic like Wyatt Lutz got booked like through that like club okay and like did well like he 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 had like a great set for uh it was a great like guest spot for Big J Okerson oh shit now he's working the club circuit like that's a possibility yeah. imagine like when Chris Toyloy like got like a guest spot 
for yeah. Big J Okerson. They're like, hey, you crush, because he did very well. If they're like, hey, you crush, why don't you, you know, come out to this like other show and maybe we'll see how you do. Yeah, and that's what uh, Jesse was telling me about. He's like, typically you just gotta work with people because he's like, it, like eventually, and like I think he said that it happened with him, or maybe it was like I don't remember which one it was, but he, they said that like they did a show with somebody, and they're like, hey, dude, I really liked your stuff. Do you want to go to Liberty with me, mm-hmm. like tomorrow, yeah. or yeah. hey, like I'm going yeah. to you know next week? Yeah, and Toledo. that seems like. Yeah, it's like, do you want to go? Yeah. And it's like, oh, I have work. He's like, well, I'll talk to your manager or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, like a lot of a lot of people just like, yeah, they're just not doing it. Um, it's it's hard for us to do it in Columbus. Yeah, it's hard to meet. There aren't a lot of comics that are touring. Yeah, that are like touring headliners. Yeah, the city. only one is like what Jason. Yeah, probably Jason. Banks. And he's just so busy right now. Yeah, that Jason he doesn't Banks. Have the time. It's uh, Simon's touring with Jason. Bobby yeah. is touring with Jason. Kenny Mock is like they're all. Yeah. I've That's n- our touring comedy scene. I, I've never all seen all Bobby. One tour I've never seen Bobby. Really? I've seen oh my Kenny God. a lot. Bobby but I've never is seen Bobby. one of my favorite comics now. God really? damn it. I was like two months into comedy and he went to Tree Bar. Do you remember that room? Yeah, Tree Bar. Yeah. So he showed up there. It was all comics. Like it was a summer day. It was fucking sweaty and humid as shit. It was right after, like, I think it was another, like, police, like, murder. Like, it was, like, another murder that happened, and he did, like, ten minutes. Like, I, the room was shaking from, like, how hard he was crushing. Damn. All comics. I like, missed It was, like, bar. 30 of us. And, like, it was so fucking funny. Damn. Like, all on, like, the Black Lives Matter movement, police brutality, just brilliant, incredible jokes. I've never even seen those jokes. Anymore. I I love, I will say this, I've never met him, but one of the things that I love is that he loves to pick on Kenny all the time online, because yeah. yeah. Kenny's a huge Christian, yeah. and he's always talking oh, yeah. shit about God, yeah. and then Kenny, I always <laughs> will see something about God or Jesus, and then I just literally just open up the comments, because yeah. I want to see what Kenny yeah. says. I'm just like, <laughs> I want to see what kind of Bible verses he's pulling out today, dude. Dude, one time I, I went to like the, the Red Rock patio, and the, and the two of them were like arguing, and like Jason was just sitting there like smoking weed and chilling. <laughs> And like Jason was like, feel free to join in, Halima. <laughs> I was like, no. do, do you go to Red Rock a lot? Uh, not as much anymore. Dude, um, if I get the time, I'll start going more. It's it's a good room. Yeah, I feel like it's it's one of the harder rooms. Very so very hard. But all right, so we got Halima. We have Go Bananas pretty much all week. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, Any of your own showcases? Heckle Mike on Thursday. Heckle Mike on Thursdays. Uh, Juniors. Sunday, February twentieth. Uh, I will be having Chris Allen. Ooh. Uh, headline okay junior's basement so I'm fuck really, yeah dude i'm really excited about that i'm also going to be doing a guest spot for uh ran barnaclo who's an incredible Boom. comic i dude. fucking love ran i'm excited to work saw with him, him open for tony woods fucking nice. strong yeah. opener yeah, fucking killer. yeah dude he, yeah yeah or not opener a feature i guess yeah because yeah, yeah I mean, neil opened that yeah show. <laughs> yeah, I love you, Neil. <laughs> I, I, do, I really do love Neil. He's a great, he's a great comic. Uh, uh, Tony was is actually going to be at Wiley's uh, next oh. Friday. I'm going Friday and Saturday. I'm so excited. Oh about shit! It. And he's gonna remember you too. He's gonna be like, "Oh, Halima." He's like, "Hey there, Shorty." Yeah, dude. What, I remember, I remember he was you. Like, I comedian. heard he had a good set. Sh- like right after I say, he's like, "I heard you he had a good set, Shorty." I was like, "Holy fuck! Holy fucking shit!" <laughs> dude, I loved it. That night was so fucking yeah. crazy because he was just like, "Oh, I." knew you guys were comedians yeah. and i was like we told you we were comedians we told <laughs> he you he was like i told you to come to the back because he just like he kind of like yeah did that like, what? Like, what what's happening <laughs> that was so good that was uh, yeah, we stayed way longer funny, than we should have but it dude, was fun. i that's my plan i've been telling like chris johnson christian hb and toy lines like plan to stay there until at least 3 a.m because <laughs> we will fucking do that it, we're gonna go out drinking with one of the funniest people on earth dude it, uh it, what'd you think about the job i didn't watch it yet i haven't oh, watched i it. liked it um there were parts where like um tony has like a very interesting life overall and i think he did a good job like interviewing that oh shit okay yeah, but like every time that like tony would try to tell jokes it would kind of go over joe's head oh. i think they just haven't like hung out enough to where like you yeah. have to speak tony woods or like have like a sense of humor yeah that's kind of like that yeah and joe just doesn't yeah at least in that yeah, yeah. i mean yeah. He, hang, he hangs out with like dave Chappelle, but dave Chappelle's not tony wood so it's yeah like, you but know it's like i think comedians like Chappelle or like when you get to that level i don't know if it's like oh this is just like a hang it's kind of like oh we're all rich and cool 
we're just gonna be rich and cool together instead of like oh we're gonna mess around and like have fun and like play like we were trying to pick out like yeah we we're picking out naked and, and yeah. naked ladies yeah, and shit just like let's uh. see how we're, let's see if there's a crotch tattoo over there yeah dude let's uh. look is the tramp stamp so the fun. same thing and we were just doing that for like hours like, dude, that was like i don't know if like if joe rogan would be the type of guy that's like yeah. oh let's just hang out at a bar and yeah a pool. i don't think so yeah probably yeah. not yeah. i hear he's really nice though i don't know yeah yeah oh but, definitely dude fucking halima we'll be rich and we'll be rich and famous yeah. together we'll, i'm i'm gonna fucking try to get into the chinese empire dude the funniest black comedian in china yeah ni hao ma that's all i've got <laughs> <laughs> Do a lingo, I'm fucking download and do lingo right after. <laughs> we'll just put Winnie the Pooh in the back, yeah. and just everyone starts standing and clapping. That's how you. That's how you should do your set. <laughs> I just turned it to like the carrot top of China, dude. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Oh fuck yeah! Well, so we got Go Bananas Heckle Mike yeah. on Thursday. Yeah. We got fucking you said Ram Barnaclo on Saturday the second uh, or the Sunday 26th. the sixth. Twenty six. Sorry, uh, my juniors showcase February twentieth. Please buy tickets for the. For, I, it is my own showcase. Yeah, it's her. I'm own going showcase. to bake something. I, I hope I'll. I'm gonna bake something for he, sure. She's gonna bake something, yeah, and uh, she's gonna make it. Yeah. Really By the good. way, it's in the same weekend that Mark Norman is there, so oh, it should be a pretty rad show. Shoot, so, wait, yeah. same day or same weekend? Uh, th- there will be a show that day, but it's gonna be like at seven, and my show's at nine thirty. So okay, okay. Yeah. Well, everybody, this is Halima. This has been episode mm-hmm. fourteen. Go watch her shows. Go fucking pay for her showcase. Yeah. Fucking go bananas. That's the club. Yes. Next Columbus um, Funny Bone. We're going to make it happen. Yeah. Or make I'll it. just pay for shows there. I don't, mind. <laughs> I don't mind paying $40 at a time and treating it like it's a comedy seller. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Holy I love you. Thank you so much for coming on. Everybody, thank you for fucking listening. Yeah. And we'll see you next week. Yeah. Damn, son.